morning. So we're at a friend's house and I just planted the most gorgeous hardy hibiscus. You already saw them go in the ground, but I want to talk about each one of these varieties and also give you a little tour of the area. So you can see that our friends really like the color pink, which is great. I love the color pink. I love all of this beautiful um, uh, lissom up here, kind of the lavender and purples really complement the pink really well. So I thought the Summerific Candy Crush Hibiscus would be a beautiful choice to tuck into this flower bed around their fountain. And it was a real pleasure planting these up here. Just the soothing sound of the fountain, um, putting in this gorgeous color. It just was a really kind of a lovely time. I really enjoyed myself. Um, so look at this color. It is just the most interesting blend of pink. There's like the super light iridescent pink with it kind of like gets a little deeper in areas and then the veining is darker down to that dark kind of dark pinkish red eye. There's something about it that really draws me in and I just planted one of these in my garden and I'm thinking about putting more in. And these get to be a pretty good size. Um, so they will fill in this area and provide some midsummer through fall color um, that's really bold. I think it will show up from the street really beautifully um, and it provides color when a lot of other things are just kind of tired in terms of perennials anyway. This is a perennial. Um, you know, our annuals typically provide a lot of color throughout the whole summer, but to put stuff in that provide that midsummer color is so important. So now I want to run into the backyard and show you the other ones and give you a little tour back there. So this is the second area back here in this beautiful flower border. Our friends moved into this home in the, it's been recent, like in the last five years. They put in this flower bed and they've been working on filling it up. Um, so I thought three summerific evening rose hibiscus would be beautiful. Now a couple of these are not in bloom, uh, but they are full of buds. But let me show you a picture of what these look like in full bloom. They are just so beautiful. They're so striking. The first one we put right here, kind of in between the teal chair and the spruce. The second one is here, kind of in that opening. And then the third one, which actually does have a flower on it, is right here. Look at this color. I just think it's the most beautiful, clear lipstick pink with that dark eye. And I wanted to plant the evening rose back here for a couple of reasons. First off, it has a different foliage color than the Candy Crush up front. This one is a lot darker. It kind of almost has a black tone to it, like a blackish red and the more sun they get, the deeper the color of leaves they have. Um, so I thought it would be a really nice contrast because there's a lot of green leaves back here and that's always something I look for, like what texture or what color am I missing in this area? So I thought that this would be a really pretty look back here. Uh, and then the flowers, since there's a lot of light pink going on here, there's a lot of light pink going on down there, I thought that this color of bloom would really, really show up nice. So now I wanna give you some care tips on the hibiscus, but I do wanna run back up front because those are really full of blooms. So first off, I wanna talk about how hardy these plants are because, you know, initially when you look at the blooms, you think, you know, this is a tropical plant. It's not gonna survive where it gets really cold because I mean, this plant like belongs in Hawaii, right? Um, but they're actually a zone four through nine. So very winter hardy. I garden in a zone five and they come back for us beautifully every single year. Um, so it's one of those things that it's just almost seems unusual when you see one in a um, garden bed where it gets really cold in the winter. Um, so this variety and the one in the back grow roughly about the same size, about four to four and a half feet tall and wide. And they're not like the older varieties of hibiscus that you might be familiar with. These are have been bred to grow very dense and full and full of blooms and not like leggy and kind of stringy looking and kind of empty in the middle like the older varieties do. So they're a really wonderful, wonderful plant to have in your landscape because you don't feel like you have to underplant them. The other ones I felt like you almost had to side them toward the back of a flower bed so you could plant other things in front of them to kind of hide, you know, the bottom of the plant. But these, once they're established, especially just are such full, beautiful plants. The thing about them is that they are technically a perennial, but they do form like really kind of strong, woody type stems, but they come back fresh from the ground every year. So it is a good idea to either cut them back in the spring or in the fall. You want to leave about a six inch stump when you cut them back. Um, that way, if any water settles on the stems, it won't freeze the crown of the plant that just kind of protects the crown a little bit um, and it's also a good idea to leave a little bit so you know exactly where your plant is uh, and they are very late to come out in the spring so you know I remember when I worked down at the garden center we'd get a lot of calls of, from people saying I think I lost my hibiscus is there anything I can do and we always told them just to be patient and wait a little bit longer it will push dormancy it'll come out and they usually do but it's just a little bit longer than some of your other perennials um, but once they do break dormancy they grow fast 
adjust into their mature size. These do like a full sun location. They can take part sun, but they perform the very best if they get a lot of sun. So this area and the area in back are both west facing. So they get strong afternoon sun from about noon until the end of the day. So I'm thinking these are gonna be really, really happy plants. And they also like a moist but well-drained soil. In fact, if you have a more wet kind of trouble area in your garden, they are fairly tolerant of wet soils. Um, so they're good to use in those kind of problem situations. You can pop them in and they can handle um, having some moisture around their roots. Um, and you know, you'll notice if they're not getting enough moisture, they'll bud up like this right here. You've got some nice green bu buds. And if they aren't being watered properly, those buds will turn yellow and drop off. So the blooms will abort. Um, so that's just something to look for in your plant. If you're noticing it doing that, it's not probably getting enough water. So today I planted them with a starter fertilizer like I do with all of my other plants. Uh, and it's actually best to plant these as early in the season as you possibly can so they can even break dormancy in their spot and grow from there. Um, but I really wanted to plant these for you guys today to show you how beautiful these blooms are. Um, and then in consecutive years, you could use like a plant tone or a flower tone fertilizer. And it's a good idea to give them, I usually give them a spring feed when they're starting to put on new growth. But if you give them a midsummer feed right about when they start to bloom, it will help them bloom better. Also, when your plant reaches is about eight inches uh, once it starts growing in the late spring. Uh, it's a good idea to go in and pinch off the very top growth. Not very much of the plant, just the very top. And that will help the plant branch out, be denser, fuller, and way more full of blooms. So these blooms obviously attract pollinators being so big and beautiful and brightly colored. Uh, and they are resistant to deer if that's something that you deal with in your area. Um, so that's pretty much it, you guys. I would recommend if you could find any hibiscus in the Summerific series, I highly recommend you putting one in your garden. Both of these belong to that series. And I think there's like seven or eight different varieties. In fact, we just planted a holy grail that's part of this series at my sister-in-law's house. And it has eight to nine inch red, like clear, deep red blooms. And I might even plant one in my garden, which is kind of uh, strange for me. I don't typically plant red, but it's such a striking bloom. I might even do it. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, seeing these plants and learning a little bit more about hardy hibiscus. We will see you in the next video. Bye.